Welcome back to my channel and first of all massive apologies for the delay. I know it's been quite some time since my last video. Uh, the reason is is that I have fully relocated. I now live in wonderful Edinburgh. Um, why Edinburgh? Well first of all it's beautiful. It's always been a real favourite city of mine. It's full of amazing places and beautiful things and, if I'm honest, great food and lots of very good beer as well. Um, I live in an area called Dean Village, which is just so nice to walk around. Um, I think it's going to be full of great photo opportunities um, and just a really nice place to be. I'd been in London for about 10 years and I didn't really ever feel like I'd settled there, but I already feel much happier being in Edinburgh. Um, and of course that gives me access to some of the great landscapes and countryside that Scotland has to offer. I'm really looking forward to exploring the coast um, and doing a lot of shots up there. So loads and loads of great outdoor stuff definitely coming up on this channel over the next, uh, I don't know, year, forever, however long I decide to live here, I suppose. But my work isn't changing. I'm still very much at CNET in my role as journalist and as photographer. Um, that isn't changing. They've been very, very good in letting me relocate here. But what has changed is everything that you can see here. This is my new place in Edinburgh. Um, and I have basically built a studio for both filming and for still photography. So I thought in this first video from my new place, I would give you a little bit of a tour, talk a little bit about what I've done here, what I've built, and how that's going to be used. So I'll start by talking about my video setup, my vlogging setup, if you will, that you can see here. So obviously the desk is the big thing. I built this very easily just from a couple of IKEA storage units and I put a big piece of uh, wood that I got from a reclaimed, recycled, eco-friendly wood place. Uh, they cut it to size and it only cost me about 12 pounds. Um, I've secured it down with a couple of bits of this double-sided rubber tape thing, it's super sticky, um, which does mean hopefully that I can flip this around, I can move it, I could paint the other side uh, a different colour so I've got more options if I wanted to actually use it in my photography, uh, which is going to be quite handy. Basically what I'm hoping is that this is going to be a relatively modular system. So behind the desk you'll notice a few things. First of all, these curtains, pretty much just standard grey curtains. They were cheap from a website called Wayfair. Uh, they block out almost all of a natural light, which is what I wanted, so that I can have full control over the light in here, because as you'll see, it's bright outside. We keep it closed, and you might never know. These are really, really creased when they arrived, so I did have to try and iron them out a bit, and I don't think I've done a very good job, but it's doing the job so far. Second thing, of course, is all the acoustic squares. Now, I put up a big wall of these squares. Um, I attached them, again, using this double-sided tape. I put little squares in each corner of the tiles and then fixed them into place, and so far, they've been up a few weeks, and um, None of them have fallen down, so I'm I'm pretty confident that that is going to be a a, a pretty decent long term solution. Um, I have put it in this crisscross pattern that you can see. That isn't just to make it a bit more patterny and a bit nicer to look at. Um, as far as I know, this actually will help with deadening the uh, the echoes a little bit more because that crisscross pattern just sort of helps cut up the sound waves a little bit more and it means that they don't get thrown back in quite the same way. I'm, I'm fairly certain that's right. I am no physicist, evidently, but I think that that is why this is a better solution than just having them all in a straight row. So hardware. Now let's start with the obvious. This thing right in front of me. This is a Shure SM7B. It's a very standard podcasting or studio microphone for close sound. And I don't love it because it does have that very close mic'd radio sound like I'm talking right into your ear. Um... I think I'm probably going to, in time, swap that out and put like an overhead shotgun mic so I can move around a little bit more freely and the sound won't change. I don't have to be quite so up close to the mic. Um, but I do like that it's on this nice articulating arm so I can kind of move it around 
um, as and when I want to. Uh, this is going through the XLR cable into a Zoom H6 recorder, which I'm then outputting straight into this camera. Uh, speaking of this camera, I decided to go with a Canon 6D with a 50mm Sigma prime lens on this. Now the reason being is just that those were kind of spare. I'd retired that 6D from everyday use and I didn't really use that 50mm prime all that much. And I wanted something that I can keep permanently set up so I can just leave it there and just hit record whenever I'm ready to go. Um, you may notice as well that I've got this clamped with an arm to uh, to my radiator. Uh, and again, that's just so I can leave it there. If I put it on a tripod, that will be taking up quite a bit of floor space and I'd end up tripping over it and moving it around and it would just get a little bit awkward. And this way, it just gets left there permanently ready to go whenever I am. I do usually shoot on a Canon EOS M50. In fact, Ugh. this Canon EOS M50, um, largely because it's it's small and it's lightweight, and I and I got a little Rode video mic, I can't remember what it's called, video mic Go, something like that, because uh, it's small and it's handheld. So I'm I'm not retiring this at all. Um, this is going to stay with me when I'm out and about because it's light enough that I can hold it up and talk into it. It's great. Um, so this isn't going anywhere. This is still very much part of my kit, but because I'm going to be taking it out and about it isn't gonna be possible to leave it fixed in place here like this one uh, for my studio recordings. Uh, let's talk about lighting though for this. This is basically a one light setup. It, I shouldn't look directly into it, it does hurt. Uh, it's an Interfit LM8 uh, LED mono light. Now the reason I chose this is A, it's powerful, uh, but B, it uses an S mount for lighting modifiers, softboxes and, and whatnot. Um, all my existing soft boxes, strip boxes, uh, snoots, everything else that I use for my photography are all S mount because I use them with various different brands. Uh, so it's great. I can use the exact same ones with this. Now I did try this with, uh, I tried it with a beauty dish. I tried it with an umbrella. I tried it with an Octobox. Um, and I didn't really like all the light that was kind of thrown around. It just looked a bit too light, whereas I decided to use a just a, a bare reflector right on the light and it just gives me like this nice pool of light. I quite like it. I did a bit of an experimenting. This isn't a fixed setup. I may tweak it. It may evolve over the coming weeks and months. Um, I'd like to put some more background lights in somewhere, maybe something on here. I did experiment with a little pink LED down here. I don't even know if that's even slightly visible on camera. But I want to um, just try making a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, put something up here that looks a bit nicer because this isn't just a space for me to do some vlogs every week on my channel. This is going to be a professional space because I'm going to be shooting a lot of video for CNET uh, here in my new location. So it actually needs to be uh, professionally like a, a very usable space because CNET standards are unsurprisingly somewhat higher than my own. But most of my other stuff isn't really changing. My computer's staying the same. That's just my MacBook Pro hooked up to this Dell screen, which I've got on a articulating arm so I can uh, I can move it around and I can maybe even show you what I'm up to. That doesn't really work. The cables aren't long enough. I'll fix that. But um, yeah, that's pretty much what I was using before. So that stuff isn't changing. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of my actual video setup. So I'm going to take you around now, the rest of the studio, show you where I'm gonna be doing my photography. Okay, so now I've switched to my M50, so I told you I'd still use it, I did mean that. Um, over here then, if I had to move the lights around, open the curtains, uh, is what would be the rest of my studio where I'm gonna be doing all of my product photography and anything else I do. Crucially, one of the main things I put in is this big background. Now, this is just two light stands with a crossbar. Um, and at the moment, I've got a roll of Colorama gray background paper. Um, I'm getting a whole bunch of other colors in there because that's great. You use them as backgrounds. You can light them. They're great. That's pretty standard for a studio. Um, this is only a fairly short space, but I am only doing small products in here, mostly phones and other bits of tech. Um, if you were doing, you could probably do a head and shoulders portrait against this. You wouldn't be able to do full length very easily um, just because the paper isn't wide enough. So if I ever do big projects, bigger pro uh, 
photographs of bigger products, bikes or anything like that, then probably going to have to find a different studio to rent. Uh, my actual product table, a little bit low key. It's actually just a big box. In fact, it was the box that all the acoustic panels came in. Um, I'm still using that at the moment because it's actually exactly the right height that I need to be to be working at. And all the tables that I'd seen, I wanted to find like a collapsible table. They're all basically at regular table height. They're far too low. I'd be bending down a lot and just not that easy to work like that. Whereas this is just a lot better for me. Um, now I am... I've got all of my regular studio equipment here. At the moment, I've just been doing some test shoots with these uh, small Godox AD200s. These are great because they are much smaller than my normal studio lights. They just don't take up as much space when they're on here. I don't need to use heavier duty light stands with sandbags. Um, normally, I use, if we can just see, it's difficult to see, these Manfrotto uh, light stands with big boom arms. This is what's supporting the LED light because this is much bigger and heavier. As a result, it's got to be sandbagged and uh, it's got to be braced so it doesn't just fall down and collapse, which has happened to me on a couple of occasions. These lights, much smaller, so that it's easier to work with and they're fully wireless and they're rechargeable, so no cables. Um, yeah, at the moment, big, uh, two by four softbox on that. I can't remember what I was shooting. Um, and I've just got a little tiny beauty dish on this Godox light as well. Um, down here, now this is where storage happens. That's right, it's just a big bag. A little more visible now. Um, oh, that might be a bit too bright. I've taken the reflector off the front of that LED light. So it's now just bare bulb and that is hopefully filling the room with a little bit more light, makes it easier to see. Down here, this is just one of those long Manfrotto rolling cases, which I only used initially just to carry my equipment up in, but it's actually been proving to be a generally good sort of storage case. Uh, in here are my um, Godox, my full-sized strobe, so you can see the size difference between this and the AD200. One is immense and heavy, the other one is not. So um, I'm not sure how much I'm necessarily gonna be using the big pros um, because when the light in here is quite dark, I don't need a full-size studio strobe's power. But yeah, this is basically where a lot of my kit is, a lot of the things like my snoots, um, sandbags and uh, these are grids for light, um, which I'm sure I'll explain more about later on. Uh, bags, guitars are over here. And then down here, all of my actual camera equipment. Cunning, I can show you more by using this, maybe. Uh, my cameras, some of them anyway. Um, I don't know what that one is at the end. Oh, it's a 600D. I don't use that. Um, my other 60 and some lenses and then down here if we can just about see more lenses and GoPro and drone basically it's all just different bits of storage in these two shelves and these shelves were only I think like seven quid a piece from Ikea so I think that's pretty good um, let's go around this is the desk from the other side what you didn't see Um, and then luckily I've got this extra, what is evidently a utility room. Turn the light on. That's just hard and yellow. So we're sticking with the light panel apparently. Um, yeah, this is just a standard utility room, but it just actually also becomes a very, very handy storeroom for all my studio gear because it's right off the side of the studio. Uh, in here at the moment, it is a bit of a dumping ground because it hasn't been properly organized but it's where I've got some of my camera cases, my roller cases. We've got another storage shelf. We've got modifiers like the beauty dish, big bag of audio equipment down there. Um, loads more equipment. We've got my big, my main studio tripod is here. Big man Frotto one with a geared head um, and lots of diffu rolls of diffusion material and different colored gels for my lights. Then of course, general just boxes of 
nonsense charges and things and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Oh, and a very handy place to store um, the magnetic mag mod light modifiers because all you need to do is just pull them off and the magnets stick back on. So that's quite handy. So apologies for the extremely rough nature of my little behind the scenes tour of my studio, but I hope it gives you an idea of kind of what I've got set up here. It's not a huge space, but I'm only shooting small products and I think that I've got just about the space that I need and certainly having a uh, fixed permanent space to be doing uh, video things like this is going to be great because if you've seen any of my previous videos, particularly when I've just been presenting from my kitchen table, it's not been great. Um, the audio has never been good and the lighting was terrible and uh, it was never very easy to do and I wanted to have something which is consistent and that's also really easy and quick for me to just set up. Uh, I don't have tons of free time to do these videos so it's really just a case of wanting to sit down, hit record, do what I've got to do and then basically press publish which is probably what this will be which is why it will be so rough rough enough for me to even drink my coffee while filming. But basically I'm super excited about being in Edinburgh and being in Scotland in general, having the access to the outdoors, having access to these beautiful places. If you do live in the area and you happen to be one of the handful of people who've seen my videos, do please let me know. Maybe we can go out and do a shoot or something. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting other photographers in the area, finding some good places to go and shoot. Um, and yeah, basically just doing a lot more photography than I've been able to do um, in London. So uh, do please stay tuned to the channel. There's definitely going to be loads of exciting stuff coming up. Uh, if you have liked this video, hit the like button and just do make sure please to hit that subscribe button as well. Not only will you get to see more of my videos um, in the future, but it does also genuinely help the channel to have those subscribers. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.